In this video, we're going to be talking about projection onto a subspace. In the last couple of videos, we looked at projection of a vector B onto a line, and that line is the span of some vector A. So the schematic picture is usually something like this. We have the vector B pictured in blue, and we project it down onto the line spanned by the vector A. There's a formula for the projection vector P, and that's given by A dot B over A dot A, which is a scalar multiplied times the vector A. This is the orthogonal projection of B onto A, and the orthogonal component is E. E is orthogonal to A. Now we're going to do something more general. Instead of projecting onto a line, which is the span of a single vector little a, we're going to be projecting into an entire vector subspace S. So S could be a plane or it could be something higher dimensional, but we're going to think of it as being a vector subspace which is spanned by a set of vectors a1 through an. I like to imagine my vector being projected down into a plane for this. In the case of projection onto a line, we use the vector a in a really explicit way. It shows up in these two dot products and it also shows up here. So how are we going to use the basis vectors a1 through an when we want to project into some other vector space s? Well, what we're going to end up doing is taking those vectors a1 through an and collecting them together into the columns of a matrix A. In fact, the span of those vectors a1 through an is exactly the column space of the matrix A. That's what it means to be the column space. It's the span of the columns. So this is the way that we're formally going to describe our vector space S. Notice that the fact that the vectors a1 through an formed a basis for S means that those vectors are linearly independent. So the columns of A are also going to be linearly independent. We're gonna need that fact in a moment. In this interpretation, then what is this vector P that we're trying to produce? P is really an approximation of the vector B. B doesn't live in S, but we wanna project it down into S. P is the best approximation of B that lives in the space S. Concretely, P is a vector, and this vector will need to be living in S. It lives in the column space of the matrix A. So that means it is some sort of linear combination of the columns of A. We can write that projection vector P that we seek in the following form. Scalar times first column of A, scalar times second column of A, and so on and so forth. Now I'm using a little bit of different notation for scalars than what I would normally write. I'm writing x1 hat and x2 hat and xn hat for the various scalars in this linear combination. This is supposed to call back to earlier notation that we used when we were solving what the projection should be when we were projecting onto just a line. In fact, that's on this page. Let's take a look at it. So previously what we called x hat, the scalar x hat that we solved for, was this quantity right here, a dot b over a dot a, and we used a little bit of Euclidean geometry to reason why it ought to be this formula. And that was what we called x hat before. It's a scalar, and it's the amount that you multiply the vector a by, shrinking it out or shrinking it back, so that you get this exact projection that we have schematically represented by the purple vector. It's the best approximation of the blue vector b that lives on the red vector a. The color coding of these vectors is indicative of what's going on. I have a vector A in red and I'm projecting the blue vector onto A and that combination that I'm looking for is represented by purple. Well, now I want to do something similar, but I'm not just after one scalar X hat. I need a whole collection of scalars, X1 hat, X2 hat, X3 hat, and so on, so that I can write my new projection vector in this linear combination. So pictorially, what's happening? I have this vector space S, which is the span of two vectors. Perhaps the two vectors a1 and a2 that I have pictured here. Now there's a third vector b that doesn't live in the red vector space s and I need to project it down. So as I project it down I want the best possible approximation of this vector b. So that vector would look like it should live about here. This would be the projection of b into the subspace s and I'm using the orthogonal projection which means that I ought to have a 90 degree angle here. The error vector here, the orthogonal component, is orthogonal to the entire vector space s. But how do I go about finding this purple vector P that I'm after? Well, it's going to be the diagonal of some sort of parallelogram. And I find that parallelogram by scaling the vectors A1 and A2 out a certain amount. Perhaps in this picture, A1 would need to be scaled out a little bit, and perhaps A2 would need to be scaled back a little bit in such a way that when I drew the parallelogram then, that the purple vector P would arise as the diagonal of the parallelogram spanned by the scaled version of A1 and the scaled version of A2. So 
How I find the projection vector P is answering the question, how much do I scale out or back these vectors A1 and A2 so that I get the right diagonal of a parallelogram? In effect, what I'm asking for are these scalars, x1 hat and x2 hat. That is the amount that I scale so that I produce the right linear combination to give me this projection vector P. So here we have our interpretation of the projection vector P. P lives in the subspace S and it best approximates the vector B. P is the vector which minimizes the error E. The error E is realized by the vector that goes straight down from the tip of B into the subspace S. This error is orthogonal to the subspace S. Thus, P we write as the linear combination x1, a1 through xn, an, where the xi hats are the scalars. If we consolidate this, we could write it as matrix times vector. P is A times x hat. Now, you'll recall from before that we had a concept of a projection matrix. It's important to note here that A is not the projection matrix. A is not a projection matrix because it is not being applied to the vector B and sending it to the vector P. The projection matrix would be what we call capital P and it would have that property that P multiplied times B would send B into the space S, giving us little p. But rather what we're seeing here is two different expressions that mean the same thing. The projection vector p can be thought of as either a x hat, or x hat is the vector of scalars, which is how much we scale the column vectors of a, or it can be thought of as p, matrix p, times the vector b. And p we can in fact describe in terms of a. So what is this matrix capital P that carries out this projection? This is the matrix a, times A transpose A inverse times A transpose. This is our specific projection matrix capital P. Now I'd like to point out that inside of the expression for P we see A transpose A being inverted. A is a matrix made out of linearly independent columns, but A is not necessarily an invertible matrix by itself. So what you cannot do is write this as A inverse, A transpose inverse, you can do that when A is invertible, but when A is not invertible, you can't necessarily distribute the inverse through that parentheses. However, it is true that if you have linearly independent columns, then when you find the product A transpose A, it will have an inverse. So this expression, as long as you leave the parentheses in it, is completely valid whenever you have a matrix whose columns are linearly independent. And that's the situation that we're in here, because how we formed the matrix A was using the basis vectors of the vector space S. A consisted of the column vectors A1 through AN stacked next to each other, and as basis vectors, these are all going to be linearly independent. Another thing that's true about P is that P squared is equal to P. In fact, this is the general notion of what it means to be a projection matrix, and it's easy to check that this is satisfied. Just write out A, A transpose A inverse, A transpose again, write that, and it'll simplify down to give you P after much cancellation. In the following video, we're going to work through several explicit calculations, doing examples with real numbers, actual matrices, and projecting vectors into spaces spanned by a set of vectors.